Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about The Fisherman by John Langan. This is one I'm really excited to talk about because I enjoyed it so much. I've seen this one spoken about a lot online in threads called things like, what's the best horror novel you've ever read? And this came up a lot and I didn't believe the hype so I put it on my TBR to check it out. I'm going to be doing plot and review, things I liked and didn't will be mixed in, but it's all going to be on the time bar so feel free to click around. I'll try and give you a spoiler free section and then some spoiler bits later, um, so there'll be a timestamp for that. Content warning though, I will be talking about death and various other scary things. This is a horror novel. The story begins with a man called Abe who recently has lost his wife to cancer. His life is upturned, he begins to spiral into a pit of despair until one day, out of the blue, he decides to take up fishing, a hobby in which he manages to find at least a little bit of solace. He teaches himself from scratch, he comes to term with his loss, and then a few years later, a colleague of his at work loses his wife and kids in a horrific traffic accident. And he decides to share his hobby with this man to help him deal with his grief together, and they become friends. After time passes, after they fish together for years, the man tells him that there's a creek he's heard about that he'd like to fish up in the forested hills near a reservoir in upstate New York called Dutchman's Creek. Stopping at a diner on the way, they are warned away from its waters by a local and told a story of the creek's history, of the original flooding of the valley, the building of a dam, the arrival of a driven black clad stranger, a woman returned from the dead and things from the other side. I urge you really, if this is a book you have not heard about, or if you've just heard whisperings about, please go in blind. I'm so glad I did. This book was somehow not what I was expecting and exactly what I needed. It did things with horror that I haven't seen done right in a long time. And it freshened up some genres that are perhaps a bit stale nowadays. It had bits in it that were genuinely scary, genuinely frightening. I was on the edge of my seat smashing through this book to find out what would happen next. It had a few tropey things in it, but they were tied into the story so well that the way they shone was in making this story feel classic. I love this book. A lot of people aren't a fan of the memoir style of storytelling, where the narrator is addressing you directly and telling you a story about something that happened to them. It's very reminiscent of more classic horror. And it's something I talked about in my review for From the Depths. It's not something I'm usually a fan of, but I think it worked very well here. So already with the narrator telling you a story, it has the feeling of a story within a story. And that's part one. And it gets even more like this in part two, where they meet the, where within the story you're being told, the character meets the diner proprietor who tells him a story. And then in act three, it all is drawn together. I really like the three part structure, and I thought it was amazing how different the three parts felt to one another and then somehow still formed something cohesive at the end. Part one feels very normal, very contemporary, a man dealing with his emotions, but then there are these really disarming sentences thrown out there, hinting that something dark and monstrous is coming because the person is telling it to you from the future after all of these things have happened. And that gets you ready for part two, which is just full on insanity. And then part three, where you discover how everything is tied together. Where this story shines in the more contemporary parts of the story is how well it depicts grief. So much of this story is emotionally driven. And by the end of part one, because of this, you have this huge sympathy established for Abe. And you're almost as hungry for the story being told to him as he is. Horror aside, this story is a story about loss, and it's a meditation on that. Loss is the driving force for pretty much every action in this book. And a lot of these actions are wild, but then totally understandable when you know that grief and loss are at the root, and you can see the desperation that's driving the characters. And it makes the horrible things that happen even more horrible when you see people's loss and grief twisted into a weapon that's used against them. I think this grief is a really important element too because of the parallel between it and the world the author is creating. Grief is this thin skin covering a deluge of intense emotion and it takes very little weight for it to become too much to bear and to break and it's the same with the thin skin of reality that the author paints in this book. Something is always 
pushing through from the other side. And it only takes a tiny tear for that trickle to become a flood. Speaking of parallels, I do wonder if the names in this book have any significance. Abe, the main character, could be a reference to Abraham, and the character could stand almost as a sort of godliness against godlessness, a light against the dark. Or it could be a loose nod to Ahab from Moby Dick, which the book does reference a few other times, which would also make sense considering the character's driven pursuit of these insane goals and all the maritime fishing themes featured in the book. You also have the diner owner who's telling them the historical story being called Howard, and if that isn't a nod to Howard Philip Lovecraft, I will eat my shoe. The descriptiveness in this book is amazing, and one of the things that make it so immersive is that it doesn't just focus on visual description, and it's so gothic feeling that it's really reminiscent of Angela Carter, Algernon Blackwood, M.R. James. Style-wise though, the one this really made me think of was Robert Chambers' book The King in Yellow, uh, one of the novellas that heavily inspired the later works of Lovecraft. There's quite a lot of floweriness in this book, and I know that with some books it becomes exhausting to read after a while, when every line is trying to be poetic and profound. But this isn't like that. In terms of how similar this is to H.P. Lovecraft, who I just mentioned, which is a comparison to this book I often see made, yes, it has cosmic horror vibes in the sense of the veil being lifted, the world being filled with more unspeakable horrors than the characters previously suspected, but I don't think the author projects themselves or their own fears or prejudices into the story in the same way that Lovecraft did, and the mythos that Langan hints at is so completely wildly different, and comes from a very different place. And I think the place it does come from lends a lot of scariness to the book. This book doesn't do that stupid Lovecraft thing where he doesn't describe things, he just goes, it was unspeakable, unimaginable, undescribable and horrific. In this book, it's that attention to horror detail that lends to the slow building of dread that stays with you long after the book is put down. And it doesn't rely heavily on shock or gore. Although I don't like the literary slash genre distinction, and I think it's stupid, I think a lot of people would say that this leans more heavily towards literary than a lot of other horror. It's about people's emotions, it's about the strain that people break under. And for a large portion of the book, the cosmic horror elements are the backdrop for a very personal story about one man. I think this could be an amazing book for people to read who have preconceptions about the horror genre, being boring and uninteresting and not taking a lot of skill to write. And this is perfect for horror fans because you get much, something much deeper than you're used to. And great for people who are looking to explore horror but are probably used to reading more contemporary stuff. Langan himself said that the literary people found this too genre-y and the genre people found it too literary, but I really think that both qualities enhance the other. Some spoilery bits. I know a lot of people are sick of western horror featuring monsters and demons that are consistently drawn from Christian mythology, and honestly same, but I've never seen a biblical cosmic horror mashup that worked so well before. In fact, I've never seen it before at all, so I guess it was an interesting mythos more than anything. And by taking this one religious aspect, it is only one, and really intensely having it in the story, it leaves you thinking, okay, so what else in this world is real? I'm not a fan at all of monsters who look human. I think it's lazy and unimaginative, but when it's a monster masquerading as a human, and using the fact it looks human as something scary, and then when that facade is finally dropped, I think that's something really special. I love the nymphs in this story. And between these and the huge bulls slaughtered on the shore of that black ocean, I wonder if there aren't some Greek mythology things that have bled in a little bit. I was not expecting magic to be in this story. Obviously there's the undefined magic that the man in black uses, but I was not expecting that magic to be used by the human protagonists, for it to be defined and for a magical system to be hinted at. That came completely just out of the left field. The way it was thrown in, just a tiny bit, 
was so frustrating because I wanted more of it, but I understand why Langan did it. It's not something commonplace. Magic isn't something that would be flaunted because of how it works in, in the book. And if it was commonplace and flaunted and everybody knew about it, I think the book would feel unrelatable. Whereas even though this has fantasy horror in it, it feels to me very grounded in our reality. Even when there are forests inside houses, monsters dredged up from the depths of tiny backwood streams, leviathans pulled from dark oceans by magicians, and wizard duels on storm-racked otherworldly shores. I love this book so much. I honestly think it's one of the best horror novels I've ever read. I cannot recommend it enough. Please read this book. I'm giving it five stars, but only because I can't give it six. Go read it. Thanks for tuning in for my review. I really love this one. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Goodreads. That's linked down below as well. And if you like sci-fi, don't forget to join us for our Interstellar Sci-Fi Book Club. The link to that will be down below. I'll see you next time for the next review. Bye.